Armando Sunan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe. Join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurigan. Here, please like, please ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks. And please change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about vectors and scalars, which are important in physics. Now, the difference between vectors and scalars is that a vector quantity has a direction and a magnitude such as from point one to point two, it'll be traveling this way. However, scalar quantity, it only defines a magnitude with a specific unit. So we have no direction, we just have a magnitude for a scalar. Now let's understand a bit more about vectors. Now to, to understand about vectors, we have to know a few terms. So for example, if P1 was our starting point and P2 was our end point, and the vector has a direction, so from P1 to P2 here, this line, um, represents what's called displacement, a change in position from point one to point two. Um, and here's another example from point one to point two, except as you can see, this red line is moving all around before landing on point two. But displacement, but this is not a displacement, this red one. This blue one, however, this blue line, however, with a direction is a displacement because displacement only depends on starting um, starting point and end position so not the route that we take the closest you can say and um, now to represent a vector quantity such as displacement we usually have a a letter with an arrow above it above it pointing to the right direction to represent forward so for example if here's point one here's point two and our vector uh, we're traveling this way we can represent the displacement as a with an arrow pointing to the right. And this vector is in a forward uh, direction because uh, it's pointing to the right. Usually right represents forward. Of course, uh, the displacement can travel backwards. For example, from point one here, it travels back to point two. Let's call this displacement a B displacement. So B with an arrow on the top. And we can say that B displacement is equal to negative A displacement. And so we can classify this whole displacement as just negative A which means that it's the opposite direction of A, above. Hope you understood that. Now, another point to make about displacement is if we start at point one, for example, and we go all around and we do pass point two, but we go back around, back to point one again, this means that there's zero displacement because there's no change in position. Next, let's talk about equality of two vectors. So to um, represent this, I'll draw the X and Y axes here. And let's just say point 1 here is the 0, and point 2 here is where it's traveling to, the vector, the displacement, A with an arrow on top. And here we have another displacement, a B displacement, from 3.3 3 to point 0.4. And so we can say that A and B displacement have the same magnitude and also the same direction. So we can write this as A displacement is equal to B displacement. Now. Uh, looking at some, looking at it in a different way. Let's draw the x, x and y axis again. And as you can see, we still have, we have the same displacement from point one to point two. This is the a displacement, and then we have from point three to point four. But this time, this displacement is traveling backwards, and so we would classify this as negative b displacement because it's going towards the negative side of this this graph. If you understand. And so we can say that A and B have the same magnitude but different directions. So we can write this out as A displacement is equal to negative B displacement. Now just to simplify and clarify this, so let's just say we have point 0.1 to point 0.2, this is uh, A displacement. Point 0.3 to point 0.4, this is um, A with a, with a hash displacement. And so we can say that displacements of A and displacement of a hash are equal. However, if we have a 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 traveling this way, let's call this a b displacement, and the b displacement is essentially traveling the opposite direction to a. So we can say that b displacement is equal to negative a displacement because b displacement is traveling the opposite direction to a displacement. Now, let's look at how this equality of two vectors can help us in solving problems. Let's just say in this xy graph, we have a vector here. As you can see, it's in the negative portion of the graph. 
Um, and here's point one, here's point two, and here's a displacement. Let's just say we want to find this angle over here. So what we can do is we can actually move this displacement A to point zero for simplicity. So we can move it all the way up here because it's exactly the same. And then with this, we can calculate the angle using some form of trig function. And by the way, interestingly enough, well, this is quite obvious that this point here is actually a coordinate. Just keep that in mind. Now let's look at another example, another x and y axis here. Let's just say the vector is here at its negative a displacement because it's traveling to the negative direction of x. And so if you want to try to find this angle, all you have to do is move this whole vector, this whole displacement, down to point zero from the start. And so with this, we can easily find the angle using some form of trig functions, given that we know some values. And Trig function, you should probably watch the trigonometry videos before watching, uh, continuing on with this video. I should have pointed that out. Anyway, so let's next talk about vector addition. And as the name implies, it's just adding vectors. So for example, if we have displacement A here and a displacement B, we can actually draw another displacement C, where C we call a vector sum. And we can write C is equal to A displacement and B displacement. And please note that C displacement is actually going this towards the same direction as A and B in a certain way. Now another example, for example, we can have we have a B displacement here and an A displacement. And with and if we draw another line here, this can be our C displacement. And C, as notes pointed out earlier, is in the same direction. And we can write C displacement is equal to B displacement plus A displacement. Or we can even write it as C displacement is equal to A displacement plus B displacement doesn't really matter. Also, vector addition um, involves if we have an A displacement here traveling up and a B displacement traveling to the right. We can even write a C displacement um, here where the C displacement is equal to A displacement plus B displacement. We can, we can do this. And similarly, if we have a B displacement here and an A displacement here, this can be our C displacement where C displacement is equal to A displacement plus B displacement or C displacement is equal to B displacement plus A displacement. And please note that C is traveling in a sort of same direction as A and B. And you might have already figured it out, but this, this A and B displacement actually can represent a X and Y axis. And this is where uh, ve vectors and trigonometry functions has an important role. To give you a quick example of this, and it might be confusing, but if we have an x and y axis here, we can have, let's just say, an a displacement here, and this will be a negative a displacement because it's traveling towards the negative x value, yeah? And then we have the negative b displacement because it's traveling towards the negative y, right? And so we can have the vector sum, the c here, which would be negative c, right? And so this point at the end of C can actually represent a coordinate of negative X and negative Y. And therefore, we can we actually call negative A displacement and negative B displacement or negative X and negative Y the vector components. And we'll talk about vector components later on in the second part of this video. But that's just how vector addition can really help in solving problems using X and Y axes. Now, actually, C displacement, um, when we say C displacement is equal to A displacement plus B displacement, we don't actually literally mean that the magnitude of um, A displacement and B displacement will equate to C displacement. It, it doesn't add up because as you can see, it probably will not add up uh, the magnitudes. But for example, it's just to show a relationship where we can say that A displacement and B displacement are the Cartesian coordinates and the C displacement is the polar coordinates, the how far and what angle, what direction. And if you don't know what a Cartesian coordinate and polar coordinate is, please watch my trigonometry video, part two. Um, however, of course, if we have an A displacement and a B displacement here traveling uh, in a row, we can say that um, C displacement is then literally equal to A displacement plus B displacement, but this is for uh, maybe motion a straight line or something like that. Um, and so, so finally, if we have, let's just say, A displacement here, B displacement here, and C displacement here, we can actually 
uh, even write D displacement here is equal to A displacement plus B displacement. Or we can write E displacement here is equal to B displacement plus C displacement. So we can add vectors in all sorts of different ways. That's the amazing part of this. It just has to be traveling the same direction. And so that was it for vector addition. Let's look at vector subtraction. Now vector subtraction is very much similar to vector addition. So let's just recap what vector addition was. Let's just say we have an A displacement here and a B displacement here. So the C displacement would be our vector sum. So where C displacement is equal to A displacement plus B displacement. And this is an example of addition. Another example of addition, if we have an A displacement here and a B displacement here, this can be our C displacement. And C will equal to A displacement plus B displacement. And note that the C displacement is traveling the same direction as A and B. However, let's look at subtraction now. With subtraction, here will be our A displacement traveling in one direction. That was a bad joke. Here's our A displacement traveling in just this direction. And then here we have a, another displacement, but it's actually going the opposite way, you can say. And so we can say that this is negative B displacement. And that means this red um, vector would be A displacement plus negative B displacement. Or we can write it as negative A displacement uh, minus B displacement. That's what this red vector is. And so, as you might have noted, that vector sub subtraction, we can use vector addition. We still use addition. So, another example, if we have A displacement here, and this is an example of so subtraction still, and we have a B displacement here, and it's traveling the same direction, so there's no negativity. However, this red displacement will be negative B minus A displacement, as you can see. Uh, let's look at an example. Let's just say here's our A displacement and here's our B displacement. Both are traveling in the same direction, right? And so this can be our C displacement, where C is equal to A displacement plus B displacement. And this is an example of vector addition. However, we can flip this B displacement over to have negative B displacement. And so this red uh, displacement now, we can write down as being A displacement minus B displacement, or A displacement plus minus b displacement exactly the same and so you can say that vectors of subtraction we still use vector addition but we use the minus sign well, let's look at multiplying or dividing vectors specifically multiplying vectors so let's just say we have a displacement here and if we double this a displacement well we can write this as 2a displacement and then if we add another a displacement we can write this as 3a displacement and Basically, how we uh, multiply vectors, we just multiply the vectors by the scalar, the size. So in the case above, we go a displacement times 3, the, the size, will give us 3 a displacement. Let's look at it as a, at a x and y axis example. So here's an x and y axis here. Let's just say here, uh, this, this vector here is our, is, a, is our a negative a displacement because it's traveling negatively. And let's just say we, we go negative A displacement times 3 uh, by the scalar, the size. And so this will give us negative 3A. And so this is what the new vector would be, negative 3A. Similarly, if we, have a neg uh, if we have a B displacement, because it's positive, it's a B displacement. But if we go B displacement and we times it by a negative number, such as negative 3, this will give us negative, three display, uh, negative 3B displacement. And so Negative 3b implies that it's going to travel negatively in the opposite direction to what it was traveling before. And so this would be our negative 3b. As you can see, there's 3. Uh, it's The scalar is 3. So you can click on a link here um, to see an example of using vectors and trigonometry uh, to, solve a, to solve a problem. In the next video, we're going to look at uh, vectors 2. So the components of vectors. But if you want to click on this link now, you can look at an example of what we've just uh, looked through during this video. Thank you.